Hello and welcome to the hallway bathroom. It is finally done. Three months, I think, after I really started this process in full force. And then it has been final touches in here for the past couple weeks. So I've been a little radio silent as I've been putting all the little pieces together, but I'm really excited to share exactly what I've been doing and what I've added in here. So first off, I just wanna say, this bathroom has what I think is a clear theme, which is vertical parallel lines. So you can see that in the shower tile. Although I did a slight variation of what you might see the usual vertical stacked tile, I did an offset so that there is a little bit more visual interest. So you see that in the tile, you see that in the shiplap cedar over the shower as well. The shiplap cedar on this wall, the beadboard on this wall, and then things like I used a reeded glass privacy foam on the window. I used a reeded glass vanity light and canisters for soap and for all the shower necessities in the niche. And then things like the towels have little stripes as well. And I'm sure if you look closely, you could probably find some other things. I like themes. <laughs> And I like hidden themes. I like particularly like geometric themes that aren't like over the top, like everything's blue. Although I might like that as a theme too, but that is subtle and you like it with your eye. And then once someone explains it to you and you're like, oh my gosh, there is a lot of that happening in this room which I just saw another one, which is the vanity faucet it has this beautiful like ridged pattern happening that fits with that theme as well. So first let's start back here in the shower stall. What I did for final touches in here was that I got these refillable glass canisters with this beautiful reeded glass look to them. Again, fits with everything. But because they're glass and this is an all tile shower, like you can imagine the horrible thing that could happen of the glass getting slippery, slipping out, crashing, shattering, horrible. So what I did is I bought these silicone sleeves to put on them so it makes them really sturdy and stuck in place and I don't have to worry about them sliding out and you know shattering and stabbing people. So I have that and I put all of my body wash, shampoo, and conditioner in these and it just looks very sleek and nice. These came brass but I didn't like the color of brass and I'm very particular about those kind of details so I used the shade of rub and buff that I've used throughout the bathroom including on this shower niche right here which is called European Gold and I made these European Gold. And then to help people differentiate between the different bottles particularly these two which is shampoo which is the body wash. I used a label maker with clear labels and it says BW, S, and C, but it's very subtle. So from a distance, it's not like, wow, those have labels on them. But from up close, you can definitely tell what they are. Speaking of metals and being very specific, I also decided to change the color of the grate I had in here. So I bought it, it was stainless steel, and then I used this polished nickel paint on it. And I thought it would fit in with the polished nickel in shower, but the paint just was not really matching how shiny and beautiful and warm this polished nickel is. So I decided rather than having what still kind of looked like stainless steel, I was just gonna make it brass so that it fit at least with all the brass in the room as well. So now the drain is brass. I wanted to mix in some more polished nickel in the room because there is a lot of brass happening over near the vanity and also here I decided to change the hardware on the toilet to brass for the same reason I had it painted that polished nickel so I made it the brass instead. So how I incorporated more polished nickel here is that I have this great robe and towel hook which obviously helps you to hang your towel when you're using the shower as well and I got this nice waffle robe to hang on it just for visual interest for this photo shoot. But it's also very soft and lovely and it wasn't that expensive, so into it. I'm still loving this window treatment. I think the Rita glass is really fun. This is definitely a cheaper window film than the one I used in the green bathroom that looks even up close. It tricks the eye in thinking it's leaded glass. This definitely looks like a privacy film. But I like the way it looks. Um, I hope one day to find one that is a little more you know, expensive looking, like could be real reeded glass, but this works for now. I love the Roman shade and tassel combo. I think this is so fun and just adds like some sophistication to this room. And then for a little art moment, I found these pressed flowers at a Goodwill once, and there are two small ones as well that I have over by the toilet, but 
The big ones are here and I just like them stacked and I think it brings a nice natural element to the room and it also adds in this beautiful teal color that I think works really well and is just a fun color pop. So we're over above the toilet now. This is centered on the toilet. This is a watercolor that my grandparents gave me. They bought in the 80s from an artist here in Texas. And I really like the colors again. I thought blue was an interesting color pop in here. And I like that this has the browns and some of kind of the peachy tones that are also in this room as well. And then I have the two smaller pressed flower pieces to the side. And then I bought this antique wood shelf at an antique store just because I needed something here. And then I have this cool little tiny goblet that is carved out of stone. And I found that at a Goodwill a while ago. And it I put these dry little rosebuds that I bought and used for my Halloween tablescape and then they dried and it worked even better for the Halloween tablescape but they also now work as really nice decor because they held their color after they dried which is great. This bathroom is very tight so in order for me to show you some of the things that are happening on the lower level I have to literally put you down here near the ground so I'm going to show you some of the solutions I have for storage in here again because it's so tiny for one, so rather than having a toilet paper holder on the wall, it was not gonna be like ergonomic to have to twist all the way around to get the toilet paper and putting it over here would have interrupted the flow into the shower. So what I did is I found this really cute wicker basket that has this fun wood rod and that is the toilet paper holder. And it also serves as storage for all of the extra toilet paper rolls and it goes back here and it's really cute and has this nice natural element in here. And I wanted to add a lot of natural elements because I find that bathrooms can feel really stark because they've got a lot of tile and metal and I want it to feel a little lot warmer and cozier. And I think wood and wicker and things like that really help. I'm really excited to share this piece with you. Let me give you a better look. Look how cute it is. I needed a storage piece that could fit perfectly here. I wanted it to be a little open so it didn't look so blocky on this wall. And I also wanted something that was wood, but also fit the wood tone of the vanity that I created, this antique cabinet. And I found this at an antique store and it's just so perfect. It has a little storage cavity space and in here I have this little antique burl wood box that I have little toiletries in if anyone needs that. And I'll probably also use a space to put in cleaning supplies, but it's just so perfect. And it has the space down below for me to put all the towels if people need them. I decided to get really thin but highly absorbent towels. So again, to save some space in here because there's not a ton of space, it's a tiny bathroom. And then up top I have just a candle and I've been wanting one of these forever, but it's a cloche that has a little cork on it. You unplug the cork, you take out a match and then you use this striker to light it and it's so fun. And again, I just love, I think it fits some of the styles we've got going on in here with the glass and it's a great time. And then last up here, I have this paper holder that I thrifted once and it, I think is a piece of marble that had some stains on it, like pink and blue ink stains or something like that. And what I did is I looked up online how to remove stains from marble and I found that if you mixed baking soda and hydrogen peroxide and created a paste and then left that paste on for 24 hours, it will remove the stain. And it can sometimes cause a little discoloration, like you may be able to see some shadows here and that's where the paste was. If I did it again, I would do the paste over the entire piece of marble and that way if it darkens, it darkens all over, but it removed all that ink and now it looks really nice. So highly recommend. I didn't realize that you can remove stains from marble so easily. I thought it was like once it was stained, it was stained forever. Here we are in the vanity area. I'm gonna turn off the lights real fast just so you can see the vanity lights because otherwise it's a little blinding. But hopefully you can see that they have this nice ridged glass and they're really beautiful. The brass that 
Again, this light came from didn't quite fit the brass in this room, so I did use Rub and Buff on it to get it to match everything else. This is the mirror that I did some DIY repair on. If you were watching in my Instagram stories, it had been duct taped on the back and had all this duct tape residue that I had to get off, and then I had to find a new way to hang it. Anyway, this is how it turned out. I really love, one, the wood element of it. I love the waviness. And I think it just looks really cool with the other wood antique pieces I have in this room. And it's the perfect size. It's just, it's fun. So I knew I needed to get, bring some polished nickel over here since I'm doing mixed models. So I decided to do two hooks and two hand towels. Does it need it? No, but I like the way it looks. I chose these hooks. They're not matched to the trim in the shower, like the rope hook is, that I have over there but the shape of them kind of matches the shape of the faucet handles. So I liked how that looked and they're just fun. And I really like how these hang. It's almost like the mirror has curtains and I actually hand sewed on these little hook tabs so that they would have hooks because they didn't come that way. And then I did some styling. I got some little white roses and then I have this really cute rated glass soap dispenser that I don't have soap for yet because I'm waiting on some fancy soap to arrive that's gonna go in here. It just, it feels kind of like romantic and moody in here and I really love that. The green bathroom also has that and then it has like those very dramatic sweeping shower curtains and I like that this brings in just a, a, a hint of that element as well. I want to answer a couple questions I received. One, I've been asked about the budget for this bathroom. If I had to say off the top of my head, I would say in like the five to seven K range all in. And two K of that was really like remediation at the very beginning, getting the subfloor replaced, getting the wall replaced, all of that. And then after that, mm, I, I will have to calculate it and I'll post it whenever I do my static post on Instagram of like the static images, I will try to calculate there all the materials and labor costs and everything. Again, most of the labor was me, particularly starting in July, it was all me. So it should not be terribly expensive, particularly for how much effort and how many quality materials went into making this room. And the other question I got asked a lot was around how I am planning to make sure that the wood I used in here is not gonna get damaged because of water and humidity, etc. One, there is a vent fan now to remove the humidity from the room and protect the wood, but also I chose a sink that went on the vanity top and covered the, almost the entire top for that reason. So there'd be less wood exposed for water damage, but also the top of the vanity is treated with several coats of poly to help with that as well. But most importantly, I will point out that this is a hallway bathroom. It is kind of like a powder bath or a half bath that you might have in your home. Guests will use it as they're visiting. Maybe they're in the living room and need to use the restroom. This is the one they'll use. It has this bonus shower, but honestly, I don't know how often it's going to get used. It is just kind of like a bonus thing that's in here, uh, but otherwise it'll mostly be used as a half bath, in which case I'm not very concerned at all about humidity and water damage because there's not going to be a lot of that happening in here probably. Although I might use it now because it's so nice and have this robe, so yeah. I hope you have enjoyed watching this process. If you have been watching on stories, or if not, this is your first time seeing it, I hope you like how it turned out. I'm really happy with it. And if you have any questions about things I used in here, materials, tools, how I did things, just let me know in the comments, I'll happily answer. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications, and that way you'll get updated every time I post a new video. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next time.